Farah Hanoon for MMA Junkie, and I'm joined by UFC featherweight Yusuf Zalal, who is the first UFC fighter to hit three wins in 2020, and is coming off, of course, a very big win over Peter Barrett. Uh, Yusuf, how are you? Pretty good. How are you guys? Doing good, doing good. Uh, it's been a pretty, pretty great <laughs> year for you so far. We should call you Yusuf Short Notice, Zalal. I think that should be your, your new nickname. I mean, are you going to keep doing these short notice camps or what? I told these guys like before, I was like, you know, I was like, if you guys look at my regional, you know, I like, I still had this going on even at the regional, you know, and I understand people say it's a lot harder, like, you know, the UFC, this and that, and like, we're fighters, man, who cares? Like, in the end day, like, if you have a game plan, you come in and everything changes, you know, and that's where I, I feel like I thrive a lot, you know, it's like, short notices come in, I don't have to do so much thinking, you know, like, I just go and fight. Would you almost say there's an advantage to it now that you've done it a few times? Definitely. That's how I feel like. And I feel like a lot of guys should have, it's like almost the same way. Like you, you don't want to, especially fighters, they overthink everything. You know, I overthink a lot of things, you know, and like for me, it's like, when it's fight come in, it's fight time. Let's, let's do it and, and let the coaches handle the rest. I'm just there to really focus on me and really trying to win this fight. So in terms of, because I know, and I'll talk about this in a bit, about you considering Bantamway, but, but not anymore. But obviously I'm assuming because uh, you jumping in so quickly uh, that the ban weight anyway wouldn't have been possible because you wouldn't have been able to do these short notice fights, right? No, I'm Moroccan. I love my bread. I don't gotta. <laughs> I don't, no, tell no, them. No. Tell them. Yeah, no, no, no. They can't. No. So they, they they find out. I was like, I told them. I was like, I told them this before. I was like, I'm skinny little African kid. You know. I was like, don't, don't, don't do this to me. You know. And I was like, I went to the PI. And they and they did a bunch of testing. And they were like, man, you would all muscle, just straight muscle, you want 34. So to make 35, you have to be 0% uh, body fat, basically, almost to be to make 136. And I was like, man, why? Why? Like, no, not cool. Like, everybody's getting so good at MMA now. It's like, makes no sense to, to just to use the weight as an advantage, you know? Like, cool, you have a weight advantage with me, but you, you better bring your lungs and cover your face with me. So that's a different story, you know? So that's why I really sat down with the coaches and sat out with the nutritionist, my strength conditioning coaches. So we just changed our strength conditioning and, and our diet. That's it. And the rest is pretty much the same. And who was it you that was considering Bantamweight or your coaches, the OC, like who, who suggested this Bantamweight move? So it was, it was me, but me and mostly my coaches though. They were, they really wanted to see me. They were like, they see those 35ers and they were like, holy shit, like you're, you're you like almost double their size and i was like i understand but i'm almost gonna double die kind of making that weight cut so i was like no it makes no sense and and my head coach mark montoya really figured it out and he was like i just don't think it's worth it you know like especially at young age to, to really just kill yourself i know like young age you, you can do it but why man the, the the mma and the science is getting so much crazier like let's use that and and win with that instead of just going out there and just being old school. If you don't mind me asking you, how, how much do you walk around that? Like what's the cut to featherweight, if anything? 160, 162. Okay, so when you're taking these short notice fights, what do you do? You kind of like don't go off the rails in terms of eating and all that, or how, how do you go about it? You know, the fighters be like this, uh, so. Uh, no, I was just like, no, <laughs> uh, like for me, I have, I pretty much have a, a clean diet uh, all year round. I don't. I don't know. I, be, I I got so used to like short notices and really staying ready that I forgot about uh, uh like what crazy food tastes like. So when I eat like crazy food, like I get so sick of it and like I don't. I don't want to eat it again. You know, and like one time, the whole day I go with, like eating one meal a day the whole day. So that's why I really go back to just staying on the diet and trying to stay healthy as much as possible. So no Moroccan food to celebrate or anything like that. Oh no, no, yeah, what you mean? Vegas we celebrate the Moroccan food. Oh my god, I like I ate like five pieces like five bread like this big. I was like, oh god. I was like, this is why I cannot live in Morocco. This is what there's no way in here I can fight. Like I have to fight a Walterway if I fight in Morocco. I just can't do it. Just can't do it. Yeah, tell tell them everything's with bread. Well, what's your favorite Moroccan food? I that's what I told him. I was like, I told this to my wife too before she came with me, and I was like, listen. I'm warning you, it's gonna be breakfast, bread, snack, <laughs> bread, lunch, bread, and then if it's not bread, it's carbs. It's couscous or rice or sifa or all this stuff. I'm like, Jesus, bro, like you guys trying to, you guys trying to give me like not make weight for sure. And I was like, okay, 
I mean, my favorite meal is sifa. That's what I like a lot. It's like a yeah. It's a, what is it like a pot? What's the pasta called? I can't forget what it's called. I don't know. Um, oh, Vel- oh, man, Vel- uh, or something like that. Uh, vermicelli, like the- vermicelli. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> can't translate. Okay, it's like it's hard. No, no, I get, I, I, I get what you mean. Well, that's the thing, right? Because like always, I spend every summer there. So when I'm eating, it's like you can't not eat the food without bread, right? Like it's not right. Like I'd rather not it's eat it like at all. Than... Yeah, it's almost like disrespectful. Like what? I'm not gonna watch everybody eat with bread, and I'm eating with a spoon. Like no, like that's not, that's not, that's not gonna work out. You know, like I don't want to be that guy. I want to be the guy in the middle of the whole table. Like, well, you just, you just too fancy now. You went to the United States, and you no, no. And stick with my roots. I'll, I'll, I'll. I'll Get those three fingers in and ready to go. Let's, <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, before we talk about uh, your win uh, over Peter Barrett, because I do want to talk about that. Uh, how often do you get, like, minus the pandemic, of course, because uh, it's still pretty, like, locked down over there. But how often do you get to go to Morocco? So I went last year in October. And then I told my family, I was like, I was like, listen, listen, I'm not coming in this year. Not happening. Let's let's uh I'm not trying to stay when they close me down and try to stay in Morocco right now. I was like I was like I got I got a whole lot of responsibilities down here I gotta deal with too. So I was like I was like we'll see. But usually I wanna make it like once a year, you know? That's my goal. Like you said, like you go in summers, I wanna make it like something like that, you know, like either go in the summer, enjoy like a month or two or or like something like that. Just really just be out of it for a little bit and we really just enjoy my family in Morocco. That's my goal. And hey, you're from Casa, right? Yeah, Casablanca. But I live in uh, uh, Casa. I uh, live in Darbu Azad, like all the way by. by oh, by the okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, cool. That must be really chill. Oh, God. It's like, again, fry, fish, fry everything in there. So, like, it, may, it does not help. Like, anywhere I go, it does not help. I can imagine. Well, let's talk about that win over uh, Peter Barrett, a great one. Of course, I can imagine when you got that spinning back kick. Uh, I mean, not, nothing. I mean, the win was was so great, all but the finish. I want to say, but I I feel like it was, regardless, a very impressive win. But surely uh, you were disappointed not to get that finish, right? Oh man, I don't know if you got like I told this to everybody. Like my face in the fight when I <laughs> so like I was like moving, whatever, cool. Like okay, throw punches, and then as soon as I moved, I was like I'm gonna spin. As soon as I spin, and I was like, man, this is not gonna land. I just wanna. To want to get get like get my groove going, you know, get my confidence going, get everything going, and then it landed, and I, I like I, I felt it in my foot, and I was like, holy shit, this actually landed. I was like looking at myself like, oh, I'm gonna go finish the fight. I gotta go finish the fight. And then literally in the middle of the fight, I, like in, in while I'm hitting, I was like, oh my gosh, this is gonna be my first finish in the UFC, blah blah. And I was going through so much emotion that minute, like that 20 seconds, that 20 seconds. As soon as he get up, I'm like, why, man? Why, 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 why did you get up, man? Like, literally, why? Like, that's, that's what's going in my head. And I was like, now, now we got to keep it going. Now I know how tough he is. Now I got to, now it's going to be a, a, a fight now. So I was like, why, man? I could come in 30 seconds to get out, but it was, he was tough, man. He was, he was definitely tough. But I was like, it was crazy emotions for me that 20 seconds. It was crazy. Well, yeah, because we could see in his face that, that he was visibly hurt. And I don't know if the follow-up shots will come up or what it was exactly. But he's a super tough guy. But I felt like you did a good job of, yeah, you changed the finish, obviously, because you dropped to the spinning kick. But I don't feel like you got too wild in there or anything. I felt like when he got back up and you noticed that he survived kind of the onslaught, you were pretty composed for the rest of the fight. Yeah, I'm surprised. That's, how, that's what I was like. I was like, what, what, what's going on? I, was like, I thought this guy was about to finish the fight. And especially the ref was talking to him. He was like, you better show me some P. You better show me some P. And I was like, oh God, let's go. Keep talking. Keep talking. Let's go. Like about to finish the fight. But I was like, yeah. I, even in the corner, when I went back to the second round, like go like under the first round, and uh, under the like as soon as the coach walked into me and he, he gave me water, I was like, did you see that fucking spinning kick? I was like, I was like, did you see that? He was like, he just started laughing. He was he was trying to calm me down. He's really just focused on the fight. I was like, I was like, no, did you see that? I was cool. I was like, I was like, that's pretty cool, but. It, it, it was it was awesome, though. Yeah, absolutely. And you're three and zero in 2020 already. Is it safe to say you're looking to get back in there in a couple of weeks or something? Definitely, man. Definitely. Like that's uh, that's my my goal. You know, I was like, I've been blessed enough to not get hurt after these fights. You know, I was like, my two fights. I've had two fights in six weeks. You know, in the UFC. So it's like for me, it was like I've been blessed enough and really just use my youth and use my movement and use my style to not really get hurt in fights so and, and i've been happy about that and like you said the weight cut is not it's not that much it doesn't do that much for us so it's like for us we'll be ready at any time 
and that's all I focus on. And yeah, man, I'm definitely want to get back in there. September, October, it don't matter to me. And do you, I, because you, you also like obviously are willing to step in uh, to replace somebody. Do you, I featherweight matchups that are coming up and stuff like that? Do you do that, or just like you get the call and you're like, yeah, I'll do it? No, like I, I, I get the call and do it. You know, I watch, I watch the cards, like you know, featherweights, like, uh, like, like I said, like I'm not the guy, but like, oh, I want to fight that guy. I want to fight. No, nah, man, whoever they gave me, they give me. You know, the UFC said number fifteen. I'm, I'm gonna fight the number fifteen. I'm not gonna say no. You know, it's like. They give me number twenty-five. I'm fighting number twenty-five. It don't matter to me. But like you said, you you you'll you'll see the the featherweights and watch the fights. Like I think they had like four four featherweights in my card. I think I don't know. I don't even know. Who, I can't remember. It was like Chris. Was it Tucker or something like that? Some yeah, guys, Gavin Tucker. Yeah, yeah. Some some guys like that. So I was like, you know, there's there's fights right there. Like they can happen, you know. But for me, I was like, I just watch them, see what. See what everybody got. So it just reminds me, you know. So when I get the name called and be like, "Hey, you fighting this guy?" And I'm like, "Oh, I watched that guy. Okay." And then as soon as you watch, like, because for me, I only watch one fight. Of whenever I get a, a fight announced, like when they announced that I'm fighting Peter, I was like, "Okay, let me look what he got." And I I watch his uh, contender series fight. That's it. And so when I go in the fight, I know exactly what he, he at least he has. You know, and I'm like, "Okay, he throws this a lot. He does this a lot." But at least I have that in my head, like at least stay in there but in the end of the day i want to focus on me and we need to get as much as i can do you know what my skills are my levels are if i'm better than the last fight or not and that was the goal for this fight and it was really to just to be better than the last fight and i felt like i did that and i'm very happy with that and people are starting to put the like really put the prospect label on you like i feel like you've opened up a lot of eyes you know i think you've been so active as well but i think that last win uh, really open a lot of people's eyes how do you see your career moving forward are you just willing to take it fight by fight do you think about rankings and whatnot or how do you how do you go about about things definitely fight by fight you know it's like it's like sometimes like i i know especially in my career like sometimes i've been uh, like I, I got rushed a little bit you know so but like now like we just we're just going fight by fight you know it's like taking it nice and easy you know if, obviously ranker guys and stuff like that we need we need like six eight weeks or like something like that but for me i like i told him like the coaches know like i don't i don't care you know i'll fight a rank guy in two weeks notice i really don't care it's like it's a win-win for me that's 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 how i feel about it it's like i get to learn so much as a young age at 23 in the ufc cage you know i already have almost close to an hour inside that cage so i feel like a lot more experience is doing that and really just getting that experience in there it does not matter about the win or loss it's all about like my coach said, it's about my effort that I put it in there and how did I really go out there and perform? And that's that's all matters. It appears that, well, Dana said uh, like last night or something that it appears that the UFC are looking to do maybe a whole nother run in Fight Island like a month. Would you be interested in fighting in Abu Dhabi? Yeah, I know that like all, all the Arab community down there is going to get insane. I'm like, Morocco, let's go. I was like, <laughs> I like so it'll, be, it'll be fun. I know that. I don't know about the heat though. I don't know, man. That's uh, <laughs> I know I come from Africa, but like, come on, man. Like that's that ninety percent humidity, bro. Like they, they, they trying to kill me out there. But it, it's I definitely, I definitely be going out there and trying to trying to get a fight down there. Because the thing is, it's like yeah, there's no crowd, but uh, I think you've noticed because they brought you on for multiple interviews. Like the coverage this time around, it's been like never before. Like the interest in the sport, the coverage. I feel like they've made a real, real effort and and trying to give coverage. Right? Even to myself as a journalist, trying to give me coverage and stuff like that. So it's been really cool. So We're yeah, like, there's no go. crowd. We made it. <laughs> 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 right <laughs> like uh there is no crowd but at the same time i feel like it it is a good experience for for someone like arab to go and and fight there despite there being no crowd so in in that regard would it be cool for you to to get to fight to say you got to fight in abu dhabi or or maybe not oh, now man. i'm just excited if i go to abu dhabi i, I just want to do go to that racetrack just drive those cars <laughs> That's all I'm excited about. Like I don't know, it's my dream to the just for like I told him I was like every interview that I do with Abu Dhabi or uh, anybody from there, I was like, listen, man, when I come down there, just just have them, just have them. Like he was like, no, no, let's do it after the fight. I was like, no, 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 I want to do it before the fight. I want to, I want to feel that joy, like get a Lamborghini or something. Like oh, they're gone, you know. And I was like, I want to do that. So I was, I'm excited about that. I'll tell you that. That's what I'm most excited about. Well, how about you just go to Abu Dhabi since it's six weeks and you since you fight every two weeks, just go stay there, right? <laughs> right? Go stay there. Like, and then just fly back, I'm like, right? 
I, I'm, I'm gonna talk to them. I'm like, here, I'm like, man. So I heard there's a uh, there's Abu Dhabi coming out. Can I just fly out, stay there? All, all my all my MRI and everything is is good. We're ready to go. Let's do it. That's how I feel. Like, let's do it. Uh, so I'll leave you the one last question. I really appreciate your time. Uh, speaking of this kind of topic, like I feel I've seen Morocco get behind you a lot. I mean, I think you did an interview with Dozem, which is one of one of the biggest channels there. And I really feel like the 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 fans and the community are getting behind you. Are you feeling kind of the love uh, from the fans? Because when you get support like that, we've all kind of seen what it does for a fighter. If you talk about Ireland with Conor McGregor or or England with this thing and Darren Till, we all know what it's like to 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 see a fighter get their home crowd behind them and what it could do for them and the growth uh, they could have in the UFC. So are you starting to feel the love from the Rock and fans? Because I'm starting to feel like uh, they're, they're giving it to you. I'll tell you that, they, they're, they're, they're crazy. Uh, like, I definitely, like, the, you know, LFA, they're like, well, I don't know about this kid, you know, that's that's how every Moroccan is, you know? They're like, oh, it's LFA. I don't know how this kid's gonna do, we'll see. But as soon as they heard the UFC, these guys are, these guys are insane, like, they're, they crazy like non-stop support like i it, it's crazy like i can't tell you how many messages i can't go through it no more i literally can't go through the messages no more it's just ridiculous and and i'm very i'm very happy and blessed and grateful for that you know to, to like you said really have a whole community behind me and really supporting my 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 career and my my dream basically you know and and it's really it's really pretty cool to to get to talk about that you know every time they ask me they're like morocco morocco and that's what i want you know i want to i want to bring that i want to be like okay you talk about me let's talk about morocco let's talk about what we bring to the table let's talk about our kickboxers let's talk about mma now you know like like oh you got a 23 year old kid like who who knows mma who knows jiu-jitsu who knows wrestling in morocco you know and i, I want that you know they're like oh look at this he's a he's a moroccan kid that knows wrestling and jiu-jitsu not just kickboxing you know and that's that's what i want and like hopefully inshallah we bring will bring more people into into the MMA community. Exactly, and that's a great point, because obviously we're known for for the kickboxing. To, so to see, like right now with you and then Ebo and Othman Zaytar, like in the UFC, it's massive. It's massive for the growth of the sport and, and the interest just overall to know the possibilities of, of being able to make it on a big stage. So surely you've inspired a lot of people. It's been a great start to 2020. I appreciate you giving me the time. And uh, I, I get the feel that in, in a couple of weeks, we'll probably be seeing you competing again. Yeah, and I'm like, I'm about to talk to you guys. I'm like, yo, so I'm fighting again, you know. I'm like, and that's what I told him. I was like, every time I do interviews, it's, it's a good thing. It's a, it's a good thing, you know. Like, you're like, okay. He was like, what's going on here? Why, why I got interviews? Like, I got, I got my, my part of the team management. Ed, he texted me. He's like, you ready for interviews? I was like, oh, well, there's another fight coming up. And I was like, now I'm about to make, uh, I'm about to have like a, a show with every, every broadcast or every interviews i'm like mma junkie every month see you there they're like okay let me guess when yusuf's fighting okay let's shoot for september let's talk about september and be like okay let's do an interview in september and talk to you guys and better talk to you after that exactly so i think i'm gonna like sort you down already for next month it's done right <laughs> 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 All right, you said I really appreciate you taking the time. Thank you so much. This was fun and uh I get the feel we'll be talking real soon. Of course. And like always they say like before they kill me, they was like Dima Maghrib, let's go. Yeah. We know. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you guys.